Good morning all. All right, so first day without hockey in a while, so I'm gonna have some fun with this. I'm gonna do a career video on Antoine Vermette. Now I'll put this into the, the journeyman uh, playlist as well as obviously the career playlist because I think he moved around enough that you could call him a journeyman and he was a hired, a hired gun more than once. So why not, right? Antoine Vermette was a number 55 pick in 2000. He doesn't make his debut until 2003. In the 03 04 season, plays 57 games, 7 goals, 7 assists, 14 points. Quiet rookie season. And in the playoffs, he plays 4 games and has 1 assist for the Sens. So it's, again, it's a quiet rookie season. His second year, pretty solid. 05 06, 82 games, 21 goals, 12 assists, 33 points. He became one of my favorite members of the Senators pretty quickly. He was a hard worker. Uh, good at both ends of the ice, and he could put the puck in the net, really, so there wasn't much not to like. In the playoffs, 10 games played, just the two goals in the playoffs. His his playoff performance overall over his career, the, the points don't really match his regular season output. 2006-2007, big year, of course, for the Ottawa Senators. 77 games for Vermette, 19 goals, 20 assists, 39 points. The Sens go all the way to the finals. And in 20 games overall in those playoffs, two goals, three assists, five points for Vermette. And by now, every time I buy an, uh, an NHL game from EA Sports, I have to get Vermette on my team. It's, it was just a rule. He was usually my third line center. He was excellent at third line center. You could use him as a second line center too. But that's, the funny thing is that there was often players that I liked more because they played the video game. So when I see that with, with prospects, I'll see that still where people are like, hey, this guy's going to be really good. Because, well, I, honestly, I played a franchise mode and he became pretty good. So there, there is that bias there, right? So 2007-2008, one of his best offensive seasons, 81 games, 24 goals, 29 assists, 53 points. Uh, four games in the playoffs, no points for him there. He finished 16th in Selkie voting, and I'm putting that on the board just to show that he he was respected as a two-way forward. Not a premier two-way forward as in like one of the five best in the league or anything, but he did get the odd Selkie vote here and there. 2008-2009, uh, he finishes with 62 games in Ottawa before he gets traded. Nine goals, 19 assists, 28 points. Was not a happy camper when the trade took place as a Sens fan. March 2nd, he's traded for a 2009 second round pick, which Ottawa would use to draft Robin Leonard, as well as Pascal Leclerc. Pascal Leclerc was going to Ottawa, where he would be heralded as kind of the next big thing in net. And it didn't really work out that well for Leclerc. And it, it is one of those interesting careers that I will be taking a look at at some point, whether it's during this Christmas break or whatever, it'll happen. Because the Leclerc story is interesting. Now, after the trade, well... This guy kind of gets proved right. So, in Columbus in 17 games, 7 goals, 6 assists, 13 points. Plays very, very well in Columbus. So, while things in Ottawa aren't going as well, playing well in Columbus, and they make the playoffs for the first time. Steve Mason's rookie year had a lot to do with that. So, four games in the playoffs, no points for him in Columbus. But it's the first time Columbus has been in the playoffs, uh, getting swept. That, that happens. 2009-2010, his first full year in Columbus, and he had the best year of his career. 82 games, 27 goals, 38 assists, 65 points in Columbus. 17.3% shooting percentage, which is 10th in the National Hockey League. So he is really premier. Uh, doesn't get sulky votes that year, but again, he's in Columbus, right? Columbus falls out of the playoffs. So... Very often that, that plus minus stat that people may or may not like can be a determining factor as to whether or not somebody might get consideration. Uh, as well as sometimes the team's record will decide whether or not a player gets cons considered for certain awards. So 2011-2012, or 2010-2011, yeah, 82 games, 19 goals, 28 assists, 47 points. His points totals drop, but still very respectable and as close to 20 goals as you can get without having a 20 goal season. So 2011-2012, 60 games played. His production drops dr tremendously. 8 goals, 19 assists, 27 points. And on February 22nd, he's traded to the Phoenix Coyotes. They wouldn't be the Arizona Coyotes until the year he leaves. So Phoenix acquires him in exchange for a 2012 second, which was traded to Philadelphia. Philadelphia used that on Stolars. Uh, a 2013 fourth and Curtis McElhinney. So... Uh, again, it's a trade involving Vermette where I'm like, okay, I like the trade for the team that traded for him. 
And for Phoenix, 22 games with them in 2011-2012 after the trade. Three goals, seven assists, ten points. And they go on a run in the playoffs for the first time and last time, really, that Phoenix has gone on a nice long run. 16 games, five goals, five assists, ten points. And, of course, the fun they were having there was ruined by the uh, LA Kings. 2012-2013, uh, 48 games played, lockout shortened season, 13 goals, 8 assists, 21 points for Vermette. So the overall totals come down a bit, but 13 goals in 48 games is respectable. 2013-2014, again with the Coyotes, 82 games, 24 goals, 21 assists, 45 points. 14th in Selkie voting, which is the highest he ever gets. 16th here, 14th here. So again, good two-way forward playing in an organization that doesn't really get the level of publicity that others do in, in the Coyotes, who would change the name to Arizona for 2014-2015. He played 63 games for them that season, 13 goals, 22 assists, 35 points. On February 28th, he is traded for a 2015 first, which is Nick Merkley, as well as Klaas Dahlbeck. So, yeah, um, interesting deal. And what was interesting with this deal at the time was that Patrick Kane's out hurt. Right, And there was some debate about how hurt Kane was. But what it did was, because Kane was on the LTIR, they were able to acquire Antoine Vermette. The Chicago Blackhawks at the deadline had a roster that was over the cap, but LTIR kept them under it. So uh, Kane doesn't return until the playoffs, which of course there were a lot of theories on at the time. After that trade, not a lot out of Antoine Mer Vermette. 19 games, 3 assists. Doesn't matter. Puts them over the cap. Nobody cares how many points Vermette actually gets. But in the playoffs, he played a key role. That's the video on his career here. 20 games, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points. Key role for the Chicago Blackhawks. Again, you know, Kane comes back. They have a full roster. And they win the Stanley Cup. And without acquiring Antoine Vermette, did they win that third Stanley Cup? Well, we don't have any way to know. But he definitely helped. So... It's an expiring contract. They don't have to worry about being over the cap the year after. July 1st of 2015, he signs back in Arizona as a UFA. So he's a hired gun for Chicago, goes right back to Arizona. Uh, in that one year in Arizona, 76 games, 17 goals, 21 assists, 38 points. And so, again, pretty solid point totals. The defensive side of it suffers a little bit as he gets older, because we all get older, we slow down. Uh, he ends up August 15th of 2016. He signs a two-year contract with the Anaheim Ducks. So he signs as a UFA. Uh, and then during that season, he misses 10 games due to suspension. So on a face-off, he ends up slashing a referee. Or a, a linesman, he ends up slashing a linesman uh, uh, on a face-off. And that's an automatic 10-game suspension. They try appealing it. In the end, he owns up to it. He did call the linesman and apologize to him. And, you know, it was it was kind of a black mark, which is too bad because it's the only time he had done anything worthy of either a fine or a suspension in his entire career. He ends up playing 72 games that year, 9 goals, 19 assists, 28 points. In the playoffs, 17 games as Anaheim goes on a bit of a run. 1 goal, 2 assists, 3 points. And it's interesting because this is the third time in a row with three different teams that if a team makes the playoffs and he's on it, they go to at least the third round. 2017-2018, uh, that changes. 64 games played in Anaheim in what would be his final year. 8 goals, 8 assists, 16 points. In the playoffs, he just plays the two games and has no points to show for it. So, the interesting thing too with his career, he has 22 shorthanded goals. That's 58th on the all-time list. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a, that's a way for him to do, introduce himself to people, but he could. Um... It's, it's just, just throwing that out there. Anyways, January 31st of 2019, he would announce his retirement. So, um, doesn't retire immediately after the 2018 season, but end of January 2019 he does. Which is why I had to double check and make sure I hadn't done a video on his career. But that would have been in the middle of the season. And when the guys retire in the middle of the season like that, it's easy for me to kind of lose the whole I should do a career video thing and, and move on from it. So he ends up with 1,046 games played, 228 goals, 287 assists, 515 points. Very good two-way forward. Decent scoring totals considering his role with the teams he was on. 97 games played in the playoffs, 14 goals, 14 assists, 28 points. He does score less in the playoffs, but he has a Stanley Cup ring. So 
that is something he has that a lot of really great players haven't had. And uh, yeah, I thought Vermette had a solid career. Again, I'll add this to the journeyman list. And yeah, uh, he, he again, if I was playing a franchise mode and I could pick him up, I did. Pretty much, I, I want to say that was through at least four years of the EA franchise that I would just, all right, I got to go get Vermette. John Michael Lyles was one too that I had to get. I just had to. Yeah, maybe I'll do a video at some point on who I had to get when I used to play NHL 07, NHL 08, that kind of thing. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'm going to have fun over the next few days because, right, we're, we're, in, a, we're in an unexpected break, so why not? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.